Someone has requested a slap guitar video. So, you know, Wes Montgomery meets Victor meets Michael Hedges, kind of like all of the above, you know, various percussive techniques interwoven with harmony and melody <laughs> or improvisation. And um, I thought I'd just start off by sort of explaining what was going on in the very beginning. So, um, these are, these are a lot of what are basically linear drumming patterns that are broken down into like either slap, pluck, or hammer on with the left hand, right? Like a flam. I don't know much you know about drumming, but it would be beneficial if you're going to explore the style to maybe look at um, drumming things, videos or something. Uh, and just learn the, the basic rudiments and things. So I'm I'm basically going like a you know like one and a two and a three and a four and a when we throw in these keep up. <laughs> like that gets a little uh, Latinized or something. I don't know. And then all of the different note possibilities of changing the pattern, like to fit whatever bass line or melody you're developing, come from basically learning ways to either hammer a note in between you're doing this but really a lot of the times you're just trying to have your right hand be stable like being like the drummer I mean, if it makes any sense it's just like don't super fast triplets and I, so that's one aspect of things then you also have another aspect of things which is okay so like you wouldn't play finger style normally for an arrangement right so you're working on just whatever autumn leaves right standard stuff how do you turn that into a rhythmic thing though because we could always play it you know pianistic style of things. 
but how would you, and of course I'm going into the middle position on a telly because it gives you that funky, slappy, quack type sound. So how would you do this? How would you, and again, it's like this linear drumming concept, you know, like where a drummer breaks up the entire pattern of the, of the, the groove over the entire kit, like you know, like they're breaking it up all over the kit and that turns it into this kind of a thing where you can run through all of these different algorithmic patterns and then it turn, it, it's like a whole other discipline as opposed to like playing stacked parts. Of course, that you can do that too and that's what we're about to actually do, but you, first you need to think linearly, like how, how is it that the groove is where are the notes landing just on a, like for example a 16th note pattern because that happens a lot the 16th note patterns i don't always i stopped doing like a lot of the just regular slap stuff in favor of this like it's like a finger style slap <laughs> understand what I'm saying? It's like instead of like slapping, you're kind of hitting the string a little sideways and snapping it. That that works pretty good. There's also like that kind of thing where you're, it's like how bass players do that, you know? Uh, like Jocko style uh, licks and things like that with the 16 notes. I'm just doing it with these two fingers. You can slide into it. And there's just a bunch of little turnarounds like this that work for this style of music that you can they can mess around with. So I want to show you in, in the terms of the Michael Hedges thing someone mentioned, I wanted to show this little clip. This is actually something that I picked up from Reggie Wooten. And it's like you hit a G chord, a bar chord, and then you go to 12th fret, which is the E is minor, is the relative minor to G major, right? So we're going just like same fret separated by one string. But see, you can still jazz that up. You can still rhythmic, rhythmicize that. And I use these flamenco strums sometimes in there too. One string sloppy because you know this is a little higher pitched obviously than a bass guitar 
a, te- they, a lot of techniques they, they they use a lot of time is to hit you know like a low note and do an octave and then do patterns like rhythmic patterns from alternating between the octaves notes on guitar though you don't have, you can't always do that up here to I mean you can go up here <laughs> You know, uh, you can do that stuff, but it's probably better a lot of times to learn to do it on one string. So there's one thing, and that's just like a bunch of... kind of like your backbeat of your rhythm plus your snare is right there. Yeah. It's like that would be my snare. That's a little tricky to get because you're you're dividing up all the rhythm while you're keeping one thing steady. Okay, so beyond that, so when you're this kind of ties back into the arranging video I did before too, because this is another area of technique where you could then take this and turn it into something. Uh, like a section of a tune, you can you can make it rhythmic uh, or just like a slap feature, or you know, where you're playing more of like the whole band, bass, guitar, and drums, lead, whatever. You know, I mean, you can really expand this out. You've seen a lot of people on YouTube probably already that have already taken this to a logical conclusion. Um. So look, I'm just gonna play some stuff over that that tune, and. Uh, just kind of see where it goes, like uh, what I what I can do. Maybe I'll look towards the latter part, go into more like of a hedges type of thing with the string and some tapping and stuff like that. Let's see what I do. <laughs> take anything that you've developed finger style I mean just anything like a 
Beethoven. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. my point though it's possible to use those techniques to arrange anything too i'll leave it at that and uh see where, where you can take it uh, hope you've enjoyed this <laughs>